Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast with Matt and Brian. And as always, we got our resident uh, guru, Kevin Moeller, on the, on the show with us here, right? Yeah, you might as well just live here, right? <laughs> <laughs> He keeps us up to date on uh, what's going on. You just got done. You've been a busy man. You've been running around uh, the state of Missouri, right? Had a full February, but a good one. And it's uh, seen a lot of guys and uh, a lot of good players. And uh, yeah, one more week left of it. And then, then the real thing starts. High school tryouts and practice. We we saw a lot of good, uh, good baseball players uh, at the... Uh, Missouri all all state preseason, you know that was a lot of fun. Um, we got uh, that'll be coming up here tomorrow. We'll have that posted on uh, on the channel. You get to hear Kevin talking to the guys. We got him. We got him mic'd up, man. You have a bleep button. You get a bleep button. Kevin? I only had to. Or worse? I, I only had to bleep him once. I only had to bleep him once, so that was good. <laughs> I think he was conscious of it. <laughs> <laughs> so no we didn't believe him he was good he didn't he was out there talking it up chatting it up with the guys it was good it was a lot of fun a lot of good baseball and and there's a lot of good baseball we're going to talk about the GAC South here and uh wow it's going to be a tough season to come out of that uh division to win it and then the two districts that are be uh focused there I mean it's going to be tough right well yeah you've got zumalt west you've got francis howell those are the two big ones from the from last year and then you're adding some you know as we'll get into some some good arms from other schools you know like a, a timberland and mm -hmm. uh you know holt so it's gonna be fun troy buchanan's gonna be right there we're gonna have we're gonna be talking with uh justin rogers uh coming up and we'll have him on the show we got uh Tim Canavan. I'm looking forward. What do you think about DeSmet real quick, Kevin? Uh, I like them. You know, and they won state um, a couple years ago, and it was kind of an, uh, an interesting season because I think they were about 500, maybe even one game below. But then it's kind of what we always talk about. They had two really good pitchers. The team kind of got hot, and they rode their one-two combo to a state championship. And uh, I think – really highly of coach Canavan and uh, you know, that MCC's that's a meat grinder. Um, so it, they're going to be right in the middle of that. Um, you know, but I, I expect, uh, you know, the DeSmet program to be right on track. Um, coach Canavan. Well, and the last time in his first season was at MICDS and he won state year one. Right. No pressure. Tim. No, no pressure. pressure. Man. <laughs> <laughs> So we're looking forward to talking with Tim. We're going to have uh, Coach Goff with him on the show. We're going to talk to both of those guys. So we got a Zumwalt West. We got some good stuff coming up, man. I I'm enjoying the conversations with these coaches. And uh, let's start off with uh, Zumwalt West. What do you say? Because they, they won it last year. They were second in the state. Um, what are we seeing, guys? I like having go first. Well, what you're seeing, and you see this in college baseball and high school baseball, I believe they had seven senior starters last year. So they were a veteran team um, last year and a fun team to watch. All, a lot of energy. Um, you knew when they were at the park. They were going to let you know, um, and a lot of good players. <laughs> um, but they got a lot of players to replace. Um one thing I do like about them uh, is they got some really good starting pitching, left-handed starting pitching. Daniel Whistler is one of the best players in the area. He's a two-way talent, uh, committed to Mizzou. Lefty that can get up to 90 uh, and is also their starting center fielder. And, you know, I'm they're going to rely heavily on him on the mound, but they're going to need him to be a, a major player offensively because um, they lost a lot of punch from last year. Then they have Kenton Deverman, a lefty committed to Evansville, who can flat pitch. He's kind of a, a mid-80s lefty, but has a really good feel for the change in breaking ball. And then uh, Dylan Bates um, committed to our sign with Missouri S&T. Uh, so they got a, a good three guys. And then you mix in Cooper Robertson, who can swing the bat a little bit. That's one of their returning starters. So 
it's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of new names. If they're going to do it this year, they're going to do it with new guys pretty much. Yeah. Well, I think the big thing for Zumo West, as we've discussed, is they got they got some arms. Can they score some runs to back the arms? Um, they've they've got uh, a, a, a catcher for the arms and Ohm. Um, and I like that point, Matt, yeah. right there, that you got Ryan Ohm, who was the catcher last year, took them into the state. He's back. Yeah, I think the big thing for West, from a team standpoint, anytime you have a season like they had last year, there's a target for the next season. Right. And like Kevin said, they were a senior group. They were a rowdy bunch. They were It was fun to watch, right? <laughs> so yeah. when you played them last year and you said, okay, we were a bunch of sophomores and juniors, okay. now this is – you know, hopefully our revenge year against them. Everybody wants to knock the top dog off, right? That's right. that's the goal. So it's, hey, can they actually, do they have the talent? Can they have a season where they are the target? Mm -hmm. And how do they do? And two, I've talked to a lot of the area coaches. Their JV team wiped everybody up last year. Their JV team was good. So you got all those kids coming that I think they lost maybe two games or something like that all year. Uh, their JV team was really good. So you got those kids coming up, right? Brian, we talk about this a little bit. Like when we talk about how or CBC, uh, that's not a good team. They didn't have a good team. They have a good program. So it, 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 and go. I, I think there's a difference. Um, you know, it, it's like looking at Edwardsville on the other side of the river, you know, some teams, you know, rise up or schools rise up and have a good team because they're loaded with seniors and others have a good program. And, you know, a down year for them is they're still going to be, you know, 10 games above 500 or whatever. Um, <laughs> in a good year, they're going to make a run at the state championship. There isn't, you know, a, a bad year where they, you know, win seven baseball games or whatnot. They're, they're one of the consistent players in, in our region, I would say. And I think Coach Goff has done a good job of that. I think he's 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 worked at that. I think he's taken a lot uh, in talking with Coach Perkins. They talk a lot. I think he's taken a lot of those those efforts to build the program, as you said. And he's a good guy. I like talking with Coach Goff. And I think it's going to be I, – I don't think you count out Zumo West. You can't. Oh, I don't think you count them out any season. No. No, um, I think – As Kevin said, but – I think their games are going to be extra fun to watch this year. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> no coach will admit it. <laughs> but no. From a coaching standpoint, and Kevin knows this too, because the coaches return. Mm -hmm. And then the younger ones that were there return. The seniors are gone. So can, can they, I mean, there are people are going to try to punch them in the teeth and it's like, you know, they're going to take some hits and I'm sure they're going to hit back. So I think those games are going to be real exciting. Let's go to let's go to Francis Howell. Let's go to <laughs> I, love that. I agree. <laughs> let's go to Francis Howell. Uh, Coach Perkins is uh, you know returning a lot of kids. Um, senior Jake McCutcheon uh, is there to lead that team. Um, most state commit, but this is really about a lot of underclassmen, isn't it? Go ahead, Kevin. Y yes. Um... They, they have an extremely talented roster. Um, I would say it's a young roster. And I think we talked about this last time. Uh, I think they probably have the biggest X factor in this state. Um, Brett Norfleet is an elite talent. Um, he's committed to play football and baseball at Mizzou. Um, you know, 6'7", right-handed pitcher. Also can swing the bat a little bit. Has some big-time power, as you might expect from a, uh, a tight end recruit. Um, but he's coming off coming off a shoulder injury. He's going to be fine. He's going to be healthy. It's just, we don't know when. So if he's a hundred percent opening day or, you know, by April, then that's going to be a huge boost for how, if he's, you know, still working his way back into it. And it, you know, he's not all the way back till June or July, then, you know, that's a, a frontline arm. That's one of the best arms in the state right there. So, um, that's an X factor. Um, they have a, a, a Mizzou recruit, uh, Titus Sissel, who started for him as a freshman that I expect to take another step forward this year. They have one of the best 
freshman in the area, uh, a kid named Leo Humbert, that's a center fielder slash left-handed pitcher. Um, they have a transfer uh, from CBC that did a nice job for them, Bryson Naputi, who's a, uh, a junior that we're waiting on eligibility to find out about. Uh, and then obviously they're led by their senior shortstop, Jake McCutcheon. So they, there's plenty of talent there. And, you know, Coach Perkins, always it's one of those programs. It's not a team. Uh, they, they always have a good program, and I'm sure they'll be right in the mix again this year. Yeah, they, they do. They've got – I think they're more on the younger side as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have there's so much talent just in the program. The freshman class coming in is is a very good group of players. The freshman class they had last year is a very good group of players. Yeah. But even the you know the sophomores and the juniors that he had last year were 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 good. So I think he's young. I think he has a lot of he has a lot of arms. It's and, and we've talked about this before. It's them. It's sorting out the pitching. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the the big dog if they have one, or they just have five or six guys that are all very good. It's all depending on really Norfleet what what he can do. Um, they're going to be good. They're going to be in the mix. They're going to be in the top. They're going to be good. As much as Coach Perkins hates to hear it, they're going to be a team <laughs> that's going to going into it. They're going to be a top pick for. The conference so they've got a, they've got a ton of talent they always do the one thing that i think is interesting and you can we talked to coach perkins about his team and he talked about a lot of guys up and down it's just figuring it out and just the wealth of talent in that program up and down as we talk about i think the one team that could be i, I i'm looking at this and after talking with um you know a few different people Honestly, I think Timberland is going to be the team to beat in this uh, division. I really do. Um, You're already picking, huh, preseason? I am. I, I, I am, <laughs> honestly, because just because you got – if 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 Hatchman has figured it out and can throw and be around the plate at 95, you can kiss that one goodbye. We just saw Jackson uh, Chu mm-hmm. at the uh, – he just was throwing upper 80s. He maxed at 88.6. I mean, if he's mid 80s, you got Chu, you got um, those one, two, plus you got other kids behind that. You got a wealth of arms there. They can hit. They're, uh, they, 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 they're looking pretty solid. Anthony Fumagalli, um, the, the catcher, uh, Cisse. Cisse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got uh, Owen Powers, Ryan Dickherber. Um, Landon Wilbrand, I mean, Parker Dempsey. What do you think about that, Kevin? Yeah, um, and I, I agree. I think they have arguably and, and probably because of ha- the best one, two in the state, Jackson Yarberry uh, returns. Oh, wasn't Jackson Chu? My fault. ERA. We, we know who you're talking about. Um, it, and Adam uh, Hatchman, you know, he had a .52 ERA last year as a sophomore. Um and I, I can assure you, he has taken another jump. Um, I've seen him up to 97 this off season. Um, you know, he, he's only gotten better and more mature. So that's as good a one-two punch as you're going to see in the state. There's some other really good ones. Liberty um, in, in Kansas City has an elite one. Liberty in St. Louis has a really good uh, – <laughs> A rotation. Uh, Ray Peck over in Kansas City has three Division One left-handers in their rotation. But right now, I'd have to say that, you know, with Hatchman and Yarbury, that's as good as you're going to find. Um, the question, and then they have uh, McCaleb, uh, who's also an upper 80s right-hander uh, in the mix. So they they got a you know either a good reliever or a good number three. The question on them is going to be. Um, offense and uh, where are they going to find these runs? And, uh, you know, cause no matter what, they're still going to be, you still probably got to score four or five runs a lot of the time, not, you know, Hatchman and Yarbury are going to have their shutouts and their one run games, obviously, but there's going to be nights when you need to get five, six runs and, and we'll see, uh, you know, that that's going to be their key. I think. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say the, the theme seems to be right now for a lot of the, the, the teams that we expect to be in the top is the pitching's there. Can they catch the ball defensively? And can they score runs? 
But this this team specifically, it's it's interesting because when you have a player in Hatchman, Adam's such a it's a it's a random find to get a kid that can throw mid to upper nineties in high school from the left side. It, it, that's not a every year <laughs> we have one of these kids, and <laughs> right. So he he can flat out dominate and and they could ride him as long as possible it's my big thing is as kevin was saying can they score four runs and can they catch the baseball behind them because at some point the ball is going to get put into play you're going to play teams that are going to bunt you're going to play teams that are going to make things happen and defensively defensively they've they've got to be intact and i think if 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 they are solid defensively I mean, they can win a bunch of two, one, three, two games if they're not necessarily swinging the bat. Because you got to understand, they're going to get the big dogs against them. You're not going to throw a, a freshman against Timberland on a Tuesday. And and this, right? I mean, and, it's just not happening. Right. And this goes to that point uh, in the league last year. Offensively, they were scoring four and a half runs on average, but giving up six point seven. So that's where I, I think the only two teams with the positive on that side were West and Francis Howe. West uh, scored eight runs, giving up 2.9. Uh, Francis Howe, 5.3, giving up 1.9. So I think that is the key to it, right? I would, I would agree. Yeah, and you always, I mean, you have to catch and throw the baseball. I mean, and, that's, that's it. You had to throw strikes, catch, throw the baseball. That's, that's, that's going to keep you in... 99% of the baseball games. When you're giving up six runs plus in a game, it's hard. I don't care. That's that's hard to win. But they're returning They're returning a lot of guys. Yes, they are. So They're, they're going to have to let, you know, Hatchman and Yarberry are, go, are going to be good. It, it's it's guys like Parker Dempsey, Ryan Dick Herber, Fumagawi. I mean, he's signed at Illinois Springfield. Mm -hmm. He's their shortstop. Uh, Carson McCaleb, uh, catcher, Elie Sisse, another catcher, like, those are going to be the guys that they, you know, are going to kind of tell the story of the season for them. So I, and it's, it's there. They have another year under their belt. We're going to see, I think they're all these guys are seniors too, in that respect, for the most part, I think there might be one or two, but for the most part, it's pretty senior heavy besides the staff. Yeah. 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 Besides it. And I'm sorry, Jackson Yarbury that I called you Jackson Chew. my bad dude. So <laughs> uh, too many names. But uh, I think, uh, again, those one, two, three right there, it's loaded for bear. It's going to be who, you know, scoring runs is going to be the premium. Um, and one of the best I've seen at that, though, is, is Coach Perkins. He can manufacture runs. He knows how to do it. He puts a lot of pressure on people. Um, that his teams uh, usually are able to do those things in those games that way. Yeah, I, so, I would agree. That's that's tough. Let's look at uh, let's start with uh, Troy Buchanan. Let's go to Troy Buchanan here. Uh, they were 16 and 15 last year, two and eight in the GAC South. But they've got some ki kids returning. And, and Kevin, you said that's kind of your sleeper pick. It is. Um, they have some good arms. Um, you know, Kate Nottie going to Drury, Ethan Edinger uh, going to Kirkwood Community College, Scotty McCartney, lefty, I think signed at Jeffco. Mm -hmm. They have a young guy named Bryson Klein. It's a sophomore that's a good arm, uh, just to name a couple to start off. So they got uh, they got a talented group. Um, it, it's going to be fun. Uh, you know, it, it's an unforgiving league, though. You, you kind of said their conference record and their, uh, you know, so if, if you're not on top of your game competing at an elite level, you can get buried, um, even for a, you know, a, a solid high school team, which I think they had last year. Um, so, but yeah, that, that'll be one to keep an eye on, I believe. What do you think, I would Matt? say, I would say they're kind of under the radar because they didn't do great last year. They have a lot of talent. But they're under the radar because they don't have the the big name guy, right? right. They don't have the Hatchmans. They don't have the, the McCutcheon, the North Fleet. Um, they've got a lot of really good players. They just don't have the star. At least I don't think they have that one star. Now I may yeah. you know get grilled for this, but well, 
But, but look at, but I mean, no, honestly, I but right. a lot of the teams that do really well are senior heavy that are just, they're a team. Yeah. But it's really hard to go into a, a game and match up against an Adam Hashman. Right. But if you, if, but if you're a team and you're playing well, I mean, it's baseball, man. Anybody can beat anybody. But I, I think as Kevin was saying, I, th- I think they're kind of an under the radar team that can sneak up on people because before the season's over, they could be say seven and three in conference. But, yeah. You know, just because they played well as a group. It, and to Matt's point, like Zoom Walt West is as good as they were last year, and they were good. Um, they didn't have a kid drafted. They didn't have a kid signed into Division One school. Now, um, you know, Tanner Perry went to Javco. That's an elite arm. They had, you know, they had some guys go to some great places. Uh, Nolan Miller, Maryville University. They had a ton of those type of guys, but they didn't have like Matt was saying, a, a Nas Sanantello or a Adam Hatchman or, a, um, you know, anyone, um, you know, of, of that nature on, on that team. They did it because they didn't have a weak link. Everyone was a good player on that team. Real quick, guys, we're going to throw this in there. We want to comment below. I, we want to hear your comments. We've been talking about these guys. If you're watching, please comment below. What do you think? What are players that you're looking at with some of these schools we, we love to hear the comments, want the comments in, involved in this. Let me throw a couple names out here to you guys, because this is a, this was a sophomore last year, Ryan McDonald. Um, hit 278, 352, 744, 19 RBIs, and you had another kid, Brock Stuckey, with only 27 plate appearances, 375, 444, and uh, nine, over 900 on his, on his uh, OPS. 10 RBIs. So these are a couple kids coming back that were, you know, just right on that fringe getting some, they could be that type of player as uh, I think they're both juniors this year. Yeah. And that, and that's kind of the fun thing to see is, you know, we sit here at the end of February, even into March, we don't know how some of these guys progress. So, you know, we'll, a guy we don't know right now or barely know, um, by the time April rolls around, he might be a household name. Um, so a, a lot of these kids, um, you know, I, I, I'm in charge of the, the rankings, you know, for players and whatnot. And, and I'll be the first to admit, uh, even if I'm perfect, which I fully admit I'm not, all you got to do is wait a couple weeks and it's going to be wrong because these kids <laughs> develop so quickly. They get stronger. Someone will grow three inches. Um, you know, so, the, the kid that was not a starter last year, all of a sudden, just, you know, gains a bunch of strength and now can hit the, you know, ball in the gap. And, you know, he's leading the area and hitting and doubles and or or that pitcher that threw 78, 81 and then, you know, grew three inches and, and gained 15 pounds. All of a sudden he's an upper 80s arm, uh, you know, so that that will happen 100 percent this spring for sure. Yeah, I mean, they're. they're they they as he said they're they're kind of like a Zumalt West of last year with you know they got some seniors to lead them, um, you know the Division two guys your yeah. JUCO guys, and they're going to be interesting. I mean there's Troy's always competitive, they're all they always compete, um, and I I don't know I, it might not be that bold of a prediction to be a sleeper from Kevin, but I well, think I think. Th- they're not somebody that everybody else in the conference is just going to say, Hey, this is, this is a gimme game. I, I I'm looking forward. I, I had just a short conversation when we set it up, but we're going to have, uh, we're going to be talking with Justin Rogers, the coach out there. And I think he's in his second year. So he's new to that program as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops that program. Looking forward to having that discussion with him and seeing what he has to say about that moving forward as well. Because, you know, you get, uh, hey, you know, you get the job at Troy Buchanan (laughs) and you get to face off against, you know, some of the best programs in the state uh, year in and year out. Congratulations. How do you handle that? How do you compete against that? I think that's a very important thought process, don't you? I'm sure last year was a learning experience for sure. Right. But they'll be good. I think they're going to be good. Yeah. Let's talk about, uh, let's go to Holt. Wentzville Holt. 
Um, we just saw Chase Lassiter. That's about all I know about Holt right there. <laughs> There's hey, a third base. They got a good third best base. Best hair in the state, right? I mean, <laughs> that's big league hair. Um, it, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm a Chase Lasseter fan, though. He can he can play too. He can hit. He's one of the best sophomore catcher bats in the area, in my opinion. Um, you know, they're also led. Uh, they do have a good senior bat, Chase Beatty, um, committed, signed at St. Louis University. Um, you know, that, that's kind of their, their, their main, uh, their, um, uh, I would say from an offensive standpoint with him and Lassiter. I, yeah, they're, Beatty was the one I was going to think of. They've got, um, you know, they got a kid at first, uh, Braden Edgar that was there last year that played kind of under the radar kid kind of a grinder. They've got a kid, uh, um, center fielder, uh, going to, going to Lindenwood, um, who's also a senior. Did you say Kyle Edgar too? Kyle is the younger brother. Okay. Braden is the older brother. He's a senior. He's a senior. Right now at Holt. Right. Yeah. So they've got, um, they've got some seniors that I think are more under the radar type of players. To where they, you know, they can swing the bats. They, uh, I don't know what they have to not give up runs. That's the thing. Well, Kevin may know more about it. They have a a left-hander, Nolan Folks, that's going to have to really step up for them. Um, pitch ability guy. He he was at the Battle of the Arch representing Team Missouri. Threw really well. Um, you know, he, he's right now a low 80s lefty with a good curveball and good change up. And, and that can certainly be, that can certainly win. Uh, so a guy like him is going to have to take a step or two forward and and, and be a leader for him. Um, you know, because they did graduate some arms and, um, you know, yeah. the, it's, they don't have the proven name guys that, uh, you know, some of these other programs have, but it, it certainly doesn't mean that there, there won't be those guys that rise up this season. Right. Cause you looking at folks, he's going to have to improve. He had a five, three, eight ERA last year. And in a, in a, in a, this conference, you're probably going to have to lower that. Aren't you, Kevin? Yeah, no, he, he was a sophomore playing varsity. So that right. that's a respectable, you know, a uh, year I would say, but uh, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see it. it <laughs> they're going to have to find uh, some answers um, like a lot of teams and mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, like a, uh, you know, a Timberland has some of these questions figured out a how, you know, has some names that, you know, coach might be wait, coach Perkins might be waiting on a couple to have answered, but he also has some questions figured out kind of already. So it's a problem when you have eight or nine or 10 questions you're waiting on. So, um, yeah, know, I mean, they'll be good we'll, at third we'll with Beatty, um, Santa Cross and center. He can run. He's going to Lindenwood, uh, big kid. He can, he'll, he'll lock down center field. I, I just don't know what they have on the mound to compete on a Tuesday, Wednesday, double header. Um, now again, that could be a group of people that, the team or we come back and say, like Kevin said, these three kids had an insane off season and came out of the woodworks a 23 or a 24 and they, you know, make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. Francis South central, not to be last. That's, that's not the point of it. We're just, we're at the bot. We, we went through the, the, I basically put everybody in the, in the order that everybody finished last year. And they were, they were 14 and 18, three and seven, but they lost their number one and two last year as well uh, to injuries. Uh, Lane Harris is coming back. Um, you got Jeff Fernley, right-handed pitcher. He's committed to Umsel over there. We had a good conversation with coach Beckman the other day. I think he's got uh, a pretty good uh, idea of what he wants to do with that program over there. Um, and they got some kids, um, you know, uh, Brendan White, senior, Jaden Jones, uh, Clayton Elo, 
uh, that's uh, also a pitcher as well. So they've got a little bit of talent there to work with, seeing what they get back with. I don't know that they'll be at the bottom of this conference or this division this year. Thoughts? Well, I think Lane Harris is probably the X factor for them. Mm -hmm. um, crafty lefties are a gold mine, in my opinion, because crafty lefties bug the crap out of everybody. I'll take 20 of them all day. Yeah. And you get these big guys that can't sit back. And I'm not saying he's, you know, a crafty, but he's not Adam Hashman. He's not throwing 95. He's throwing 85. He's throwing, I mean, that's coming off of surgery. So we don't know where exactly he's going to be. And he's probably not going to be there. And we don't even know if he's into season. ready to go. He's probably not. So um, I think that's a big thing. And then uh, Fernley's going to Umsul, correct? So that'll be, uh, you know, another arm that can hopefully they can ride for a while. And then, you know, Jay Jones at third uh, kind of gives him some senior leadership. He's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. But I think to me, it's going to come down to can they get – is Lane going to come back in time to throw to give him a, a, a one-two punch, so to speak, yeah. on the mound? Kevin, what do you think about these uh, two juniors, Braden Rubel, Landon – Kane? Yeah, I, I saw Braden uh, the other day, actually. I like him. Um, there's one, a guy that's probably taken a step forward from last year. Uh, you know, a mid-80s lefty now that I'm guessing wasn't a mid-80s lefty last year, has a really good feel for the secondary stuff. Uh, he's a guy that they're going to need to have blossom uh, this year, and I, I'm guessing they're going to count on him heavily. Um, you know, a, another, another team with some unproven guys that uh, need more guys to step up. And with Lane, you know, not having him, uh, th that's a setback because he's, he's one of the top lefties in the state as well when healthy and, you know, has a big time breaking ball. Um, but we'll say this, they have one of the best athletic directors in the, in the state. <laughs> so they have that going for them. <laughs> Shout out there, Mr. Harris. <laughs> I appreciate Scott Harris. He's been really good. He's been fun. Uh, appreciate him with helping with uh, Youth Baseball Midwest, and we're looking forward to, you know, uh, he's been very instrumental in helping us with the GAC game of the week. He's a good dude. I like Scott. Hopefully he can hit and pitch a little. <laughs> <laughs> you know, though, the thing, and that's what, uh, when we talk with Coach Beckman, he, they believe, they don't know, you know, you never know. But they believe they're they should they're going to maybe get Harris back towards the end of the season, which could put you in a position if you've got him, you know, if he's healthy, what? could make a run. And I'll say this: um, just going through these teams and, and schools and whatnot, these guys are loaded with really good coaches too. Um, Coach Backman does a really good job um, with the guys, and so that you know. It, you just go around program the program. We are fortunate um, in, in the area. We're blessed with a lot of good coaches, the care, and, and, you know, I think for the most part, try to do what's right by the kids and, and focus on development. And, and so, and, and how central it certainly falls into that category. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think the big thing is they care. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's kind of always been the, uh, the, misconceived uh, uh, thing with high school coaches is you find some, especially back in the old days, that they were just there to get the check before they retired. It's not like that anymore, especially JSC. I mean, you got a lot of guys that actually care or trying to build programs. And instead of just saying, hey, I have a team, I have programs. And it's probably why the GAC is where it's at now. I think, uh, I think one of the interesting things that we have here is – what we've been talking about, I think these gentlemen are interested in building programs. You have coaches that have been around long-term. I think Nick's looking to go long-term with that program. You've had Coach Perkins there. you got Coach Goff at West. Um, Timberland, I believe, he's a pretty new guy. Andy uh, Zier, mm -hmm. right? And so we'll see how he does. But he's got, you know, I mean, you have the, the, the talent pool, most definitely. So I think it's interesting. I love that point, Kevin. That's great stuff, man. Next show, Matt's going to come out with the coaches' power rankings for everyone. 
Yeah, you really make everybody mad. I there. love that. <laughs> that's that's a, perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So guys. that's a that's a great way to not have friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're not really, and, and, you know, I, I, I hate this cause it's high school, you know, picking, but I, I do, I think, you know, at the end of this, I think Timberland stands out at the top of that, just a shade over, but of course anything can happen injuries barring, but you know, you, Timberland, I think Francis Howell's on what West at the top of that. And then we'll see how, I think, I think how central with Beckman, you know, they have the opportunity could make a late run. There's so much could happen, you know, working into those things. I mean, it's just, Am I supposed? I mean, am I Go, supposed baby. to make a prediction on who I think is going to win the conference? You can if you want to. Kevin, who did you pick? Timberland. I have not picked. Oh, you have not picked. All right. So since you picked Timberland, I'll pick Francis Howell. Okay. All right. Just because I want to be different. Just for giggles. Just, just for the fun of it. I'll pick. <laughs> I'll pick Howell to really make Perkins mad because he doesn't like anybody <laughs> when they pick his team. So, Coach, I'm going to go ahead and pick Francis Howell. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> Kevin. Floor's yours, buddy. I I hadn't picked. Um, this is tough. Um, if I had if I had to put my money down on one, which I know we're not doing, um, I, I would probably it, it's going to be close. I would say how if I had to pick today. Um, oh, he's going to be real bad now. <laughs> it, I think there's. I think there's three teams that legitimately could, um, and I don't want to name those three, could win this thing. This is this is wide open. This isn't like, uh, you know, a slam dunk type thing. This is going to be very competitive at the top end, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if uh, one of about three, maybe four teams wins this thing this year. Yeah, I would agree. I'd say there's four. I think there's four teams that could win it. Yeah. Personally. Goodness, mercy. We, that's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. And, I, and, and I'll say this, and we've talked about this before. If you're looking to watch some good baseball, go out. If you're, if you're a baseball fan, go check out these teams play baseball. You won't regret it. It's very good high school. It's high-level, high-caliber high school baseball. Don't expect to see the St. Louis Cardinals. That's, but, you know, I mean, it's just it's not Good that. atmospheres. The atmospheres. Yeah. I mean, I, you're watching great baseball. You're watching great players. Um, and but atmosphere is it's high school, it's, right? Yeah, it's like no other sports or community. That's what I like 100%. And you know, I, I did this with my son last night actually. Um, if you have a uh, a, a younger boy or, or girl, um, you know, take them up to the high school game, take them up to watch one of these local what your local schools so they they get an idea for what it what it's supposed to look like. These guys, you know, all of them aren't going to be big leaders, certainly, but these guys are playing at a high level. A lot of these guys are going to go on and play in college baseball, and these are well-coached teams and programs. Go take take your 10-year-old son out and look, see what an infield, you know, a pregame infield looks like. See how these catchers throw down in between innings and, you know, how the kids get on and off the field, how they run the bases and, and how hard they play. So you can learn a lot from going out and uh, watching. I had my son out at a high school basketball game last night. Um, you know, just kind of watching how kids are dribbling and it just, it, it helps them understand the sport and, you know, how good some of these guys are. I would agree with everything you just said. That's good <laughs> advice, isn't it? <laughs> I love that, man. Well, with that, there ain't nothing left to say there. Guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate the input. Yeah, thanks. Excited to get it going. Kevin, where are you headed to, man? Um, I'm local the rest of the way. I got uh, I got a couple of events left to close out my February, which I'm excited about. And then I'm going to piece all this together and, um, you know, put together uh, our preseason uh, team rankings. Uh, so we'll see. You know how smart or not smart <laughs> I am. Um, last year I was pretty. I ended up being pretty good uh, in the state tournament. Uh, the uh, all kind of the teams that were at the top made it to the state, so I feel good about that. And see if we can do that again uh, this year. But it, it is going to be uh, 
highly competitive again this spring. It, February and late January has been really educational for me, getting to see all these guys across the state. And uh, now I kind of put it together in March and sort some of it out. And then the real fun begins when we get to that uh, third Friday of February or March, we, we get out and uh, guys like us that just talk about it. Uh, the kids get to decide it on the field and uh, that'll be fun to watch that. Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. As always. Kevin, thank you very much. Everybody, remember, leave a comment below. Put your comments in there. Tell us what you think. Put your list. Who's your pick? If you're a homer, that's okay. Put it in there. We love that stuff. Tell us what you think about the upcoming season. That's what it's. this is about. We love the conversation. Everybody, have a great day in the Lord. All you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. And you hitters, hit them where they ain't. And that's good advice. And we will see you next time.